In Creo Simulate, you can use surface regions to apply loads and constraints to a portion of a surface and volume regions to apply thermal loads and materials to portions of a part. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have a robotic arm assembly that I want to analyze and it's going to be constrained through these bolt holes over here and I want to represent the head of the bolt as applying some constraint. If I go to the displacement command and then try to pick this surface, I would end up getting the whole surface, but that doesn't represent what I want to simulate. So instead of using the constraint dialog box, first I am going to go to the refine model tab, and here's where we can define surface regions. I'll click on the command. Since I'm in an assembly, first it's asking me which component should get this feature. I will select this component over here and then click the OK button. And now I get a dashboard that allows me to define the surface region. If I expand the references tab, you can see that you have the option to split by sketch or split by a chain of edges. I'm going to split by a sketch. I don't have a sketch to select, so I will use the define button to create it. And I'll pick this surface over here. It's suggesting this surface to face the top of the screen. That's fine. Let's click on the sketch button. Now when I am in sketch mode, let's go to the concentric circle tool. And I'll select this and then expand it out a little bit to represent the size of the bolt. Let me, oops, let me get out of that and delete that unwanted entity using the delete key on the keyboard. Now I can double click on this and change this to a value of 12. Let's continue using the concentric circle and I'll just let it snap to equal radius or equal diameter. That's good. And select the last one over here. And so that way I have the different circles that are going to end up splitting up the surface. Let's hit the check mark over here and then it's still red because I need to specify which surface or surfaces I want to split up. It's just going to be the same surface for the sketch. Now you can see highlighted in that sort of orangish color the individual surface regions. That's good. So now I can hit the check mark. And when I go to define my constraints, I'll go to the Home tab, Displacement. That way I can pick the simulation surface region. And I'll just leave it fixed in X, Y, and Z and click the OK button. And that way I have this constraint applied to a portion of a surface. Now this situation was pretty straightforward because it was a flat surface and I sketched on it. Let's take a look at an example of applying a simulation surface region to a curved surface. Let's say I want this part over here. To make things equal, or excuse me, to make things simple, I am just going to right click on it in the model tree and then use the open icon just so that I'm just seeing the one individual part that I want to use in here. And so let me just orient the model to go into simulation mode. We'll go to applications and then simulate. And let's turn on the display of some datums because I am going to sketch on those. Turn on my plane display. All right, so once again, I'll go to the refine model tab and we'll go to surface region. And again, I don't have a sketch. I can right mouse click and hold and choose to define an internal sketch. I will pick this plane to sketch on and I'll accept the defaults for the orientation. Let me go to the sketch view and for sizing this, I will just use a center rectangle and let's center it about over here and make it about yay big. And I can change the dimensions if I want to change this to 60 and I can change this to 40 and 20. That's good. I will hit the check mark and right now the sketch 
is located on this datum plane top that I was sketching on. If I go to the references tab again, the surfaces collector is still empty. If I pick the surface that I want to place it on, you can see that it automatically projects the sketch onto the surface that I selected. It's intuitive to know that if you create a sketch and then select a surface, you want to project it. There's no need to do it as a separate operation. All right, that's good. Let's hit the check mark out of here. So there I have a simulation surface region. I'm going to close out of here and then close out of here. And I'll have that simulation surface region here in the assembly to use. Let me turn off my datum plane visibility once everything updates. And by the way, if I also select that component, if you take a look at it in the model tree, I'm going to scroll down. We've got all the different features. There is a simulation, excuse me, simulation features folder. And in that simulation features folder, you'll see the surface region now is defined. And so now if I go to define a pressure load, I can pick that simulation surface region to apply it. And let me change the drop down list. Let's say I'm going to say that that surface is going to have a pressure of 50 psi placed on it. Click the OK button. And that way, the load is applied to that simulation surface region that was created by projecting a sketch onto a curved surface. Now let's take a look at volume regions. And I'm going to select a component over here. And again, I can use the right click in the model tree to open it up in its own separate window. There are two main reasons to use simulation surface regions excuse me, simulation volume regions in Creo Simulate. Uh, one is to apply thermal loads. So for example, you could have a thermal load applied to a volume. And the other way is to use different materials. And back before Creo Parametric 7.0, that's the method that you had to use when you didn't have multi-body modeling. Let's take a look at this. So here I have my part over here. I can go to the Refine Model tab. And here we have the volume region command. We have a drop down list that shows the various different methods that we can use. Let me turn on my datum plane display once again so that I can see what I want to sketch on. And you can see that this part, portion of the part is in one color, this portion is in another color. Maybe there are different materials and I want to use that in my analysis. So let's go to a volume region. And I'm going to revolve a volume region. And so for the placement, for defining a sketch, I'm going to sketch on the datum plane called left. And let's have this surface face the right side of the screen. And I'm doing that just so I automatically get a sketch reference located on there. That's good. Let me go to my sketch view and add in a bunch of other different references. Pick this surface over here. So now I have enough references in there. Let's throw in a center line that will be used as the axis of revolution. Let's make a horizontal one. If I hover my mouse over it, you'll see that it says that it's automatically designated as the axis of revolution. All right, now for sketching, let me use the line tool and I'll just create a line going here, 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 there, there and then now close off the sketch. That's good. Hit the check mark. It's automatically going to revolve through 360 degrees. So I'll hit the check mark over here. Let's turn off our datum plane display. And again, we have our folder of our simulation features. There is the volume region. And now for applying materials, I can go to the home tab. Let's go to the materials button. Yeah, we get the warning in Creo Parametric 7.0 about a default material now being applied to the model. I can go to the Granta library and let's go to our ferrous metals and I'm going to find a high carbon steel. Let's add this to the model. Let me go up one level and I'm going to simulate that that black portion over there is like a, a hard rubber or something. So let me go there. I have my silicone rubber. Let's add that to the model. Now I can click the OK button. Let's now do our material assignment. I'm going to make this dialog box a bit bigger. And we can see that 
by default for the component, we're going to have the default PTC material. I'm going to use the drop down list to grab the high carbon steel to make that the default material. I'll click the OK button. And now I'm going to do a second material assignment. And this time, instead of leaving the default components, here's where I can use the drop down list to change to volumes and then pick this simulation volume region and then use the drop down list to grab the other material that I added in here and then click the OK button. And that way we have two different material assignments being used in this part for our analyses. And so that's how you can use simulation surface regions and volume regions to apply loads and constraints to a portion of a surface and materials to different volumes in a part. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.